Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Cyrus the Great, King of Persia. His name is familiar to many Christians because of the important role he played in Old Testament history. In 536 BC, he issued a decree that ended the Babylonian captivity, a sad time in Old Testament history. Cyrus's decree allowed God's Old Testament faithful to return to Jerusalem, rebuild the city, rebuild the temple, and restart the ever-important sacrificial system. With Cyrus's gracious decree, their church life could start returning to normal. Cyrus the Great, King of Persia, his name is familiar to many Christians because of the important role he played in Old Testament history. In Isaiah chapter 45, our Old Testament reading for today, God, through the prophet Isaiah, has a message of encouragement for Cyrus. And that message of encouragement includes these ideas. God tells Cyrus that you are my anointed. That's an important word in the Old Testament. It means that Cyrus has been chosen by God for a special purpose. It even says there that God has summoned Cyrus by name. Also, Isaiah has this idea that God will prepare the way for Cyrus's success. I will level the mountains before you, God says to Cyrus. That has kind of a John the Baptist ring to it. And just like John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus by leveling out the mountains, filling in the valleys, God is going to prepare the way for Cyrus. God also says that he will break down gates of bronze as he prepares the way for Cyrus. Also, Isaiah, uh, uh, or God through Isaiah says that he would give to Cyrus political and military success so that Cyrus would have the authority to issue this decree to allow Jerusalem or God's Old Testament faithful to return to Jerusalem. I will subdue nations before you and strip kings of their armor. God would give Cyrus political and military success so that he could issue that decree. Another thing that Isaiah says is that God will do this so that Cyrus would know the Lord, the God of Israel, though for now Cyrus did not acknowledge him. And then also God does this uh, with Cyrus for the sake of Jacob, my servant, it says in the book of Isaiah, for the sake of Israel, my chosen. That is, God is doing all this with Cyrus for the sake of his Old Testament church, for the sake of his Old Testament faithful. Cyrus's decree allowed God's Old Testament faithful to return to Jerusalem, rebuild the city, rebuild the temple, and restart the Old Testament sacrificial system. And one of the neat things about all of this is that God is saying all these things about Cyrus, even calling him by name, before Cyrus is even born. Cyrus hasn't even been born, and yet God knows him by name and has a plan for him and his service to the church. In fact, the Babylonian captivity, that sad time in Old Testament history which Cyrus will bring to an end, it hasn't even started yet. And God has in place already a plan for its ending for the sake of his church. Well, among other things, our Old Testament reading is a reminder that God sees a bigger picture than we do. For the sake of his church, he's thinking two, three, four, maybe a hundred steps ahead of us. God cares about you. He cares about his church both then and now. And it's okay to trust him Trust in God is trust well placed. I want to mention a few things from the life of the Apostle Peter that also reminds us of this idea that God sees a bigger picture than we do, and for the sake of his church, he's thinking two, three, four, maybe a hundred steps 
ahead of us. Peter sometimes struggled to see the bigger picture that God was working. Uh, Jesus, remember in Matthew chapter 16, was talking about going to Jerusalem and there he would suffer and be killed and be raised on the third day. And you remember what Peter said to him, no, Lord, this shall never happen to you. See, Peter, he's not seeing the bigger picture, though Jesus is. Also, when Jesus was arrested, Peter's the one who pulled out his sword and cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, as if to say again with actions, no, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And when the women first reported an empty tomb and a resurrected Jesus, those words seemed to Peter like nonsense. So just another way of Peter saying, no, Lord, this is not what's going to happen. Peter sometimes struggled to see the bigger picture, but thank the Lord, by the day of Pentecost, ten days after the resurrected Jesus ascended into heaven, Peter is a changed man. He was blind, but now he sees. And here's a line from Peter's Pentecost sermon that day, when he says to the, to the group gathered there, Jesus was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. Peter sees it now. God knew what he was doing all along. God sees a bigger picture than we do. For the sake of his church, he's thinking two, three, four, maybe a hundred steps ahead of us. It's okay to trust in him. You know, the world that we live in still today is a place of uncertainty and disappointment and turmoil and tragedy. But keep on trusting God and his compassion for you. It's the sensible thing to do in a, you know, in a world that's so mixed up. He sent Jesus to die and rise for you and to defeat death for you and open the gate of heaven for you. And he has called you by name, especially in the waters of holy baptism. And in the way he runs the world still today, God is thinking two, three, four, maybe a hundred steps ahead of us for the sake of his church, for your sake. So keep on repenting of your sins, confessing your sins to God, and uh, being forgiven by Him every day is not too often. Keep on value, valuing word and sacrament. Keep on finding value in your baptism where God made you a part of His church forever. Keep on valuing the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper where we receive the body and blood of Jesus for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Keep on valuing the many and various ways that God's Word, the Holy Bible, is presented to us. Thinking about our Gospel reading for today, keep on giving back to Caesar what is Caesar's. That's Jesus' way of telling us to be faithful citizens of this earthly kingdom that God has made us a part of. It's one of the ways that the church serves as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And remember also that even the littlest things you do in faith are important to God and a blessing to others, and they help make this troubled world a better place. And above all, remember that God is thinking about the future with you and his whole church in mind, and he has good things planned. It's, it's what he does. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.